Free Period is a podcast of First Baptist Watauga Student Ministry. For more information about First Baptist Watauga, you can check us out at fbcwatauga.org. Hello and welcome to Free Period, the weekly break you want to take. I'm Kevin Skinner, the Associate Pastor and Student Pastor here at First Baptist Watauga. And I'm Nathan McKendry, your Young Adult Minister and Assistant Student Minister also here at First Baptist Watauga. And this week we will be answering the question, how are we supposed to explain to others that God is real? And the shout out for this question goes to Hannah Kimmerly. Well done, Hannah. Good question. Yeah, thanks, Hannah. Uh, But first, before we get to that, today I'm going to give Nathan another word or phrase from the 1800s, just like we've been doing every single week, and uh, you're going to have to guess. See if you know this phrase today. I need some redemption. I didn't get it last time. Yeah. So um, the word today is giggle mug. Giggle mug. (laughs) Gosh. It's not a phrase. It's one word. Giggle mug. Where do they come up with this? (laughs) Giggle mug. (laughs) Uh, then be crazy in the 1800s yeah thank goodness we've moved on giggle mug um i am totally at a loss i'm gonna say all right well let, let's hear and then i'll give you a hint if you are off okay giggle mug i i want to say that it's just i don't know like an extraneous extraneous statement like oh you're you're just being a a giggle mug i don't know like 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 an insult? Yeah, kind of like it sounds like an insult. Like you're just being a giggle mug right now. Okay, so let me give you a hint. Okay. Uh, so it's not an insult. <laughs> I I did not take it as an insult okay. in reading this. So I'm gonna um, turn it into an insult. Yeah. <laughs> Is I mean it, I, I I hear where you're coming from. I I, I can easily sounds see like someone shouting that at someone else. Somebody. You giggle mug. All right. Uh, but think of. Think of it as a compound word, all right? Like Two a laughing words. coffee mug. Does Sarah okay, have one of these? Well, what what is what is mug another word for? Oh, a giggle mug. So like a bad photo? No. But they didn't have <laughs> photos no. as we know them. <laughs> right, but I mean what 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 is a mug? So someone that's just laughing, is that what it is? Like a mug is like a face, like a mug shot. Right. You know? Yeah, it's their face. So, so a giggle mug is like a like a weird smile. <laughs> All right. So the the actual way that it was used was uh, a face that was always smiling. Oh, so, so it's some someone that was always smiling insult. was like a giggle mug. Okay. So you can still say the statement. Oh, you're just a giggle mug, but it's yeah. I mean, I think it's really the, not at least the insult. the way that it was worded is not necessarily a about the person, but specifically about the face. So I don't think you would right. say that you are a giggle mug. I think that you would say that you have a giggle mug. Oh, you're wearing a that giggle you're, mug. Like your face is just always smiling. Okay. I so like know. a teacher walks in the classroom, sees a bunch of students sitting there, and one of them is wearing a, a giggle mug. And she's like, hmm, that's suspicious. What's that giggle mug about? Uh, unless, I mean, I'm the way I am reading into this, of course, it's just one line. The way I'm reading into this is that it's, it is someone who has a face that is always smiling, not suspiciously smiling. Mm-hmm. They're just always smiling. That's just... Well, but if someone was wearing a smiling face always, don't wouldn't you find that suspicious? Not necessarily. I, I know really jo- I know really joyful people that are just always smiling In no matter what. In the year 2020, what. you do? <laughs> <laughs> I do. They're okay. called Christians. They're called giggle <laughs> mugs. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> giggle mugs beware. I find you all suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe. <laughs> but he, he doesn't. He, he thinks you're all great, <laughs> which is a good thing. <laughs> They're all my best friends. Uh, that brings that song up to my head. The, the, you're my friend. You're my, you're my brother, brother. You're my yeah, friend. You're, you're my brother. brother you're, my friend. you're my friend. Yep. I want to go listen to that. But we need to move on. Yes. Let's get to the question for today. That was a very derailing word, <laughs> giggle mug. All right. The question, though, is how are we supposed to explain to others that God is real? And um, again, Hannah, well done for the question because it's not an elementary question. It's uh, certainly a little more more difficult, and it, it falls into the category of a fancy word, apologetics. Yeah, uh, that's right. And, and apologetics is the defense of our faith. And in fact, that word apology means to offer a defense, all right, or to give a defense. And so like 
think about when you are told to go apologize, you've done something to your sibling, right? And you're told, go apologize, or maybe you talk back to your mom, go apologize to your mom. Ultimately, when you apologize, you are offering a defense for yourself. But of course, many times our apology is, I have no defense for myself. I I was wrong. My defense is, I was completely wrong. Please forgive me, right? And and many times we can just sum up that statement into two words, I'm sorry, right? And so that's kind of how we get from this word apology of offering a defense to those two words of I'm sorry, right? But that word uh, apologize means to offer a defense. Yeah, perfect. And, and of course, when it comes to apologetics, understand that there are many, many books uh, written on this. Um <clears throat> and where I have certainly not read all of them, there is one that I will go ahead and, and recommend you. Um, this right here, if, if you're watching, but if, if you're listening, it's called Living Loud, Defending Your Faith by Norman Geisler and Joseph Holden. Um, it is certainly not the end-all be-all for apologetics, but as a high schooler, I found it a, a good introduction, I think, to some of the, the fundamental questions and arguments. Um, certainly a good starting point. Um, but we, we're not going to address everything that mm-hmm. said, and, and our conversation really doesn't pertain just to that book, but, uh, we will address a couple of arguments for the, uh, specifically the existence of God, which is kind of a branch inside of apologetics. So what's the first argument that we're going to discuss today, Kevin? Yeah. So the first argument that we want to offer to you, <laughs> Hannah, is the argument known as the design argument or the argument for intelligent design. And I talked a little bit about this several weeks ago, back when I I was in our Stupid Is As Stupid Does series on Wednesday nights. So with this argument, we we look at a simple truth that I discussed uh, several weeks ago, a simple truth that we see at work throughout the world, which is that every creation has a creator. Every creation has a creator or every design has a designer. And we could look at and discuss a couple of examples, right? First, we could look at a car, right? Most people have cars. And if you go out and you look at your car, you will see that your car is a very complex thing. You lift up the hood, right? There's there's just a lot that goes into the inner workings of your engine in that car, right? Or if you look under the car, you see all of the pipes and all of the lines running. Uh, there's a lot just going on under there and, and how the wheels are perfectly attached to the car. And, and then you open up the car and, uh, man, look at the interior, right? All, all of the, the seats have been sewn together, whether it's leather, whether it's cloth, uh, or you've got carpet on the floors and you've got a radio or uh, a GPS, right? All of this computer work in, in more modern day cars. So we look at a car and, and we say, man, it, it would be absurd to think that this car just poof, just just out of thin air, just came into being, right? No, we look at a car and we say, clearly there has to be a creator, a designer of this car, right? And, and the same could be said for buildings, which is a specific example that I gave uh, several weeks ago. As we look at buildings, right? We, whether it's a tall building, a small building, right? As we look at buildings, right, it's got a foundation that, that the building sits on and, and the, the outside of the building may be elaborate. Uh, and then you go inside and there's multiple rooms, right? You have bathrooms, you have large rooms, you have small rooms, you have meeting rooms. Uh, if it's your house, right, you've got a living room, you've got a bedroom, You've got a kitchen, right? All of this strategically designed for the purpose of your house or for the purpose of this building, uh, all of it strategically designed, right? And so as we look at a building, just like looking at a car, we, we look at a building and we would say, man, it would be absolutely foolish to think that this building just out of thin air just came into being, right? No, we know that that there was an architect that drew up designs and then there were builders, carpenters, there there were people that that worked together to build this house 
or build this building. Uh, and so, so we look at this and, and we say, we've got the same argument for humankind, for this world, not just humans, but for this entire world. As we look at at the inner workings of humans, right? Just how our bodies are put together, how complex our bodies are. As we look at the ecosystem of the world, how everything works together for water to evaporate and then to precipitate, for the sunlight to shine down onto green plants and those plants to take in that sunlight and then for those plants to then put out oxygen for us to breathe as we think about bees that fly from flower to flower to to pollinate right pollinization happens because of these little bees that god has created and and, uh and so we look at all of this stuff in creation and just like a car and just like a building we we have to look at it and say man there's no way that this would just come into existence, poof, out of thin air, without there being a designer, without there being an intelligent designer. So that's kind of the overview of the the design argument or the argument for intelligent design. What's our next argument, Nathan? So uh, the next argument, the one that I like to go back to a lot, is the uh, moral argument. Um, It can break down the categories itself, but let's consider just your conscience, right? Like, Typically, you know when you've done something wrong. There's some there's some gray area there, right, where we were like, oh, I don't know if this is right or not. We talk about what the right thing to do is. But we kind of intuitively know that there oftentimes is a right thing and a wrong thing. Now, again, that's not a blanket statement. But, uh, for instance, you, you are aware murder is wrong. And, and even if we examine other cultures and we just look in a, in a very broad, general sense— Nine times out of ten, murder is generally seen as a bad thing. The vast majority of cultures would say that murder is bad, right? And, and that understanding that something can be bad or good, that, that's our ethics, right? That's, that's our morals. And morals don't just poof, arise, like they have to come from somewhere. There has to be a moral law giver if, if there are truly moral laws. And so, you know, my argument for existence of God based on that is, you know, if, if we didn't have God, we're, our ethics really have, have almost no reason to exist. Um, so I, I would argue that our ethics are kind of a, a, a good starting point for a reason that God must exist. Um, now, certainly that's a very shortened, specific, uh, concise argument that could be discussed so broadly as something to be talked about with Matthew over coffee, not <laughs> <laughs> not not fully in a podcast that's only 15 to 20 minutes. But uh, I think that that's a good starting point. But what are, so those are the two main arguments. What, what else do we have? Yeah. So if you are a believer, uh, if you have given your life to Jesus Christ already, uh, then you have your personal testimony. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, your testimony is your personal experience with God, and and so you can share, you know, fr- from your own experience, how you have experienced the existence of God. And so that's, I have found it important in my life when I experience certain moments where I'm like, oh man, God was so present. Look what he did, you know, and you might be tempted to to call that coincidence. Dennis has talked about this multiple times from the pulpit. He's mm-hmm. tempted sometimes to call these things coincidences, but when they happen over and over and over again in your life, you, you realize that they can't really be coincidences, you know? And so I encourage you to write those down. Write down when, when you feel God's presence or God's come through for you, because you can share that. And those are encouraging things for other Christians to hear, and they're a really good testimony to show others, look, I've seen God exist in my life, right? And so your faith becomes more personal, more more real. Absolutely. So. Yeah, and, and so with that, even if you have not had, you know, for, for those of you that are younger, right, you're students, uh, so so you have not ha- experienced as much life. So, so maybe you don't have tons of moments that you've just seen God, but, uh, but you have given your life to the Lord. And so just at the very basic level, if you have given your life to Christ, you have experienced God through Jesus Christ. You have 
read his word, heard his word, and then seen God at work in your life as you came out of your sins and into salvation. And so just at a basic level, you have that testimony of God at work in your life. And so, and then just as Nathan is saying, as you continue to go through life, you you can continue to see God's hand at work in your life, uh, continuing to build upon your personal testimony, uh, your personal experience with the existence, the reality of God. So Hannah, thank you so much for this question. Nathan and I, we really do appreciate uh, this question. And, and I know that we, we were not able to spend just a ton of time uh, answering this very deep question. And so that's why Nathan pointed you to uh, that book. Uh, but there are many great books out there. There are also many great apologetic speakers out there that you can look up on YouTube, like Ravi Zacharias. Uh, and, and so you can learn from some of these others that have uh, kind of based their life on uh, this study of apologetics. Uh, we even know of a well, the, uh, another name that comes to mind. First of all, Josh McDowell uh, has written on apologetics, and then I believe John Biles, just a FPC Wataga member. I think he's studied yeah. it extensively. Absolutely, so, and he's yes. not the only FPC Wataga member to have studied it. So ask around the church; you might find some people who are uh, heavily interested in this particular branch. Yeah. So, so let me also just offer you a little bit of peace, Hannah. If you have a friend that does not believe in God, understand you can share these arguments with them. Uh, you can talk about uh, the existence of God with them, and 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 share these things to maybe help them understand why you believe in the existence of God. Uh, but ultimately, God will be the one that has to be at work in their life to uh, to reveal Himself to them. And so. Uh, my biggest encouragement to you, you absolutely want to share, right? But my biggest em- encouragement to you is to pray for them. Just begin committing to pray for them, that God would reveal himself to them, that he would use your conversations with them, that he would use uh, even these apologetics arguments uh, that you that you share with them, that he would use those things. But, but the biggest thing is pray for them, that God would reveal himself to them in their own lives. All right, so that's it for this week's episode of Free Period. Join us again next week as we answer the question, who has the best French fries? Bye. I hope that you enjoyed today's podcast, and I'd love to meet you in person. If you're a student between 7th and 12th grade, you can join us on Wednesday nights for midweek at First Baptist Wataga. You can also join us on Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m. for growth groups and 10.50 a.m. for worship.